Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Beanie Antics here and I have an echo in the background. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Beanie Antics here and um, today we are going to be talking about the pitching attributes. I said that we were, that this was going to be out yesterday. I already had it filmed, but I just couldn't be fucked with yesterday. I had a lot of stuff that I had to do, plus I got Zelda and I wanted to kind of play around on it before I started the Let's Play for it. That will be out tomorrow. Um, I've still got a little bit of stuff to do today, so I'm going to hurry up and edit this, get this out, then I'm going to go do that stuff, and then tomorrow we should be back with a few more videos. Uh, I'm going to try to put out two tomorrow. Um, we'll see how it goes. But, um, but anyways, yeah, with that said, oh, before I start, please, everybody, if you're watching this video and you've been, been enjoying the content, please like and then subscribe and then maybe do the little notification thing where you get a notification if it's on if you want to be a beast at this game I want to do everything I can to help you um, also uh, follow me on Twitter at USM Baseball 1 um, I will be updating like if I'm not uploading that particular day I'll let you know I'm, I tweet out all of my videos um, so be sure to, uh, to go and subscribe and be on the lookout for that um, and tomorrow I'm going to be announcing something that I think you guys are going to think is pretty cool and that you'll probably want to be involved in. I don't know. I could be wrong. Anyways, let's get into it. Okay. Pitching attributes. Let's go to a different team here. Let's get a better example. Maybe Chris Sale. Okay. Pitching attributes, uh, are often misunderstood. Um... People really like to look at overalls. Overalls don't matter. They don't matter at all. With that said, um, a lot of people like to look at the overall of a pitcher and judge how good he is. Um, and uh, that's, that's just not the right way to look at it, especially in a game like this because there are... Uh, attributes that are kind of weighted poorly or attributes that don't matter at all but they do affect the overall of a player and so, so you cannot go by overalls you can't do it um so let's talk about what does matter with pitchers though hit per nine like i said before hit per nine works with contact to determine your opponent's pci size so a guy with high K per nine, or high hit per nine, I'm sorry, um, is is going to shrink your opponent's PCI more than a guy with low hit uh, with a low hit per nine. K per nine works the same way except with vision. Um, it works in conjunction with vision. High K per nine guy uh, is is going to drive down the um the the PCI size of your opponent. Another thing that those two do um that. I, that I believe that they do. It's it's kind of hard to confirm this though, but I do think I remember talking to a dev once and they told me this. Um, hit per nine affects how, uh, like I said with contact, it affects how much wiggle room you have within that PCI and how solidly you hit the ball. Hit per nine also works against that too, so that it's harder to square up balls even if you get your PCI on it. That's why a lot of times you may be in the game and you may, you know, think that you've crushed a ball and it goes nowhere. It's probably because the, the pitcher you're facing has really high hit per nine. And K per nine, I think, I remember this also, affects how easy it is, how, it's kind of hard to explain how close your PCI has to be before it's counted as a swing and miss. Sometimes you'll see, like, your PCI won't be anywhere near where you uh, where the ball was and you still somehow fouled it off. It's probably because the guy that you're facing has really low K per nine. Now, if uh, and sometimes you can have good timing and your PCI is just a, a tiny fraction off of the um, off the ball and you swung and you didn't foul it off at all. You completely whiffed. It's probably because the guy you're facing has really high K per nine. It affects how uh, often swings and misses are going to happen. I think. I, 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 
I have a vague recollection of speaking with a dev. I've, I've been on a conference call with a dev twice. And in one of them, I, I think I recall them telling me that, uh, that that was the case. If I'm wrong, and a dev, if you're watching this, tell me that I'm wrong. I just have a vague recollection of that. Um, walks per nine. Walks per nine are not nearly as important as hit and K per nine. I think they should be, but they're not. Um, but walks per nine really uh, determines how easy it is to use your interface. Um, so if you're using meter uh, and um, you know you hit your meter perfectly, it's going to be a lot harder to do that to hit it perfectly. If you have low walk per nine, if you have high per nine, it'll be a little easier. And if you make a mistake with low walk per nine, it's going to hurt you. Um, a lot more than uh, than it would if you had high walk per nine. Then you might not be penalized as much, and it might you might not be as likely to hang a pitch. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Um, so that's what walk per nine does, and we're gonna talk about control too, because control is kind of like cl batting clutch. It's kind of mysterious. Um, home run per nine does not matter at all in competitive gameplay. Um, and in single player gameplay does not matter at all. It's a simulation stat It means nothing if you're actually in a game if you're doing franchise mode and uh, Your guy has high home run per nine He's gonna give up bombs if you're simulating through the game But that's all that it matters for if you're playing competitively It does not matter and that's largely what this tutorial series is focused on is competitive gameplay uh, your clutch rating, I think, I've said this for a lot of attributes, I probably shouldn't be doing a tutorial on this, right? Not, but um, your clutch does, I think, have a little bit more meaning than hitting clutch. I think your controller will like vibrate a little less if it's pretty high, if you're in a you know runners in scoring position or late inning situation or something like that. Um, you may, if you have high clutch, you may be able to shrink the opponent's PCI a little bit, but kind of like batting clutch, I think the effect is minimal. It's not, uh, it's not something that's like a make or break with a guy. If he has high clutch, cool, that you know, whatever. But do not focus your attention on that. Um, the 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 four things that you really want to look for, well, really the five things that you want to look for in a pitcher. Good hit per nine, good K per nine. I like to set the hit and K per nine. I like this uh, in Diamond Dynasty anyway. I like to set um, a collective 155 minimum. So if you add up uh, hit per nine and K per nine, if it equals up to 155, then I am okay with that player and I think he's good to use. If it goes any higher than that, all, it, I, it's all gravy after that. But if he has that 155, I think I can effectively use this guy. If he's below that, the PCIs that you're going to be facing are probably just going to be too big, regardless of what types of pitches he has and how good, good a, his stuff is. He's probably not going to be great. <coughs> but uh, that's what I really like to look for. And th those are two very important things. Two other very important things are velocity and break. Velocity, the way velocity is determined, it's probably the least important of the five things just because of the way it's determined. I've done a little uh, fiddling around with this and it appears like velocity is determined by how, by, by the, the rating of your highest rated fastball so like if you're fast like if you have three fastballs if you have a four seam a two seam and a cutter whichever one of those has the highest velocity rating that is going to be what your velocity attribute is it's not going to average those out it's not going to do it's not going to take your secondary pitches velocity into that it's not going to do it do that it's the highest rated fastball in your arsenal from a velocity standpoint, that's what your velocity is going to be. So that can be kind of deceptive sometimes. Like with Chris Sale right here, if you set his velocity to 83 on his four seam, he would be throwing like 96, 97. 
um, if it was on his four seam, it's possible that it's on his two seam. Actually, let's look. Um, attributes, pitching attributes. Okay, no, it is. Oh wait, it is on his uh, on his two seam. See, 83 velocity on his two seam. He throws 94 miles per hour, and 72 on his four seam, 94 miles per hour. So see, that's kind of deceptive because you can look at another guy with 83 velocity. And if that's on his four seam, he's going to be throwing a little bit harder than a guy like Chris Sale. Break is, um, I'm not sure how break is determined, but I do know that it is important. Um, I, it looks like break is determined the same way that fastballs are determined. So that can be pretty deceptive too. It looks like it's the highest rated pitch with the highest rated pitch that has break on it. Um, like breaking ball. God, I can't fucking talk right now. Jesus. <laughs> the highest, um, the, the pitch with the highest break rating is going to determine what your, what your break rating is. I want to finagle around with this and see if fastballs count in that. I'm going to set that to 70 and I'm going to set his four seam to 99 to see if he has 99. I'm going to set his two seam to 99 too, to see if that gives him 99 break. It does. Okay, so that is super deceptive. If um, so, so break may actually fall below velocity if that's the case. If so, that means that if you have a guy that has 99 break, it's possible that that 99 break is on his two seam fastball, and his slider might have 13 break. That's awful. You can't. Um, but th th that needs to be changed. That needs to be looked at. If a dev is watching this, they're probably not. But if they are, you need to work with that because that's not good. You need to figure out a way to more accurately represent velocity and break. With all that being said, though, generally in Diamond Dynasty, if you see a guy that has velocity and has break or good velocity and good break, their stuff is going to be pretty good. That's a general rule that you can follow, and it's probably going to be right more often than it's going to be wrong. Um, uh, 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 what was I going to say after that? Uh, I suck at YouTube. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Okay, yeah. The final thing. The final thing that you want to look at, and this is probably... It's right up there with Hit and Caper 9 as the most important thing. Is pitch selection. Pitch selection is crazy important. And let me tell you why. You have a guy like, I don't know, Dennis Eckersley. Dennis Eckersley has a four seam and a slider. That's not a good pitch selection. The guy you're facing only has to worry about two things. And those two things aren't even great. He doesn't throw that hard. And his slider is okay. But the guy you're facing doesn't have to worry. It doesn't matter if Dennis Eckersley had amazing per nines. He still wouldn't be a great card. Another guy like that who does have great per nines only has two pitches that I talked about in one of my earlier Diamond Dynasty videos. Craig Kimbrell. He has two pitches. He has a four seam and a knuckle curve and a two seam, which it's it, a two seam is not a great pitch in this game. You can't really count that as a third pitch. He has two pitches, a knuckle curve and a fastball. He throws gas. His knuckle curve has loads of break on it. He's not a good pitcher in this game because even though he has the high pronounce because his pitch selection is awful. Then you have a, a, another example, um, Raleigh Fingers, uh, Burt Blylevin. Burt Blylevin is an abortion in this game. He has he ha he actually has four pitches, but in reality he only has two. He has a four seam, he has a twelve six, he has a normal curveball, and he has a two seam. Couple that with the fact that his hit per nine is awful. His K per nine is awful. All iterations of him suck. They're terrible. 
and that's a travesty because Burt Blylevin was a hell of a pitcher. Um, but that just goes to show that pitch selection is huge, and it's something that you really, really need to look at whenever you're deciding who you want to be on your Diamond Dynasty team. After uh, this one, I know I said that the last one was going to be the boring one, and I know that this one was kind of boring too. Um, this is going to be the last one that's focused on just like main menu types of stuff and how to optimize like team management and stuff like that until we actually talk about Diamond Dynasty team management and marketplace stuff because I am going to do a tutorial on marketplace stuff too. And, uh, and, and I'm really looking forward to that because I'm a big marketplace guy and, uh, and I actually think it's a lot of fun and it's not hard to do. But um, tomorrow we are going to be talking about zone hitting because I couldn't get to it today. We're going to be talking about zone hitting for beginners in the first half of the video and then more advanced zone hitting later on. Um, like later on in the video like I'm gonna try to split it up into a beginner section and then a more advanced section to, to, to try to really optimize what I'm doing so uh, so yeah I will see you guys tomorrow and um, please like and subscribe and uh, if you if you follow me on Twitter USM baseball one is my Twitter handle follow me on Twitter and uh, retweet out these videos and um, I have a really big announcement coming up and uh, probably next week um, that uh, that I think that whoever watches me is going to be pretty excited about. So, uh, so yeah, um, like I said, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.